Creating photo compositions is easy. Making them look realistic is another thing. In this chapter, you find out how to blend your layers together, how to use layer masks, and take advantage of layer comps so that you can create the best composition possible. In this lesson, you discover some hard-to-find keyboard shortcuts that you can use when compositing with layers. So first of all, I'm creating a new document, and I'm just going to choose default Photoshop size, but I also want to make sure my background content is transparent. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to have a transparent layer to start with. Now, something to consider. I've got these checkerboards representing that I do have transparency here. If these drive you crazy or you want to make a change to them, understand that you can go into Preferences for Transparency and Gamut, and you can change these to not appear at all or maybe smaller, medium, and even change the color. I've seen some people change the white to the same color as gray as the checker so that the gray indicates it's transparent, but they can see their edges a little bit better. So it's really up to you. I'm canceling that right now. Now I'm pulling by the tab the Layers panel up so you can see that I have a transparent layer. One thing that drives me crazy is when layers are not named. And so I know that I'm going to put a red square on this layer. So I'm double clicking on the layer name and I'm typing in red square. Next, I'm taking my rectangular marquee tool and I'm just making a red square. So again, I'm building a document from which to work from. If you want to follow along, this is great. It's easy to do, and it gives you a file that you can really mess around with and learn these keyboard shortcuts. I have my rectangular selection. I want to fill it in with red, so I'm pressing Shift-Delete, and I'm choosing that I want to use my own color, choosing red, and clicking OK. OK. Now, I want to create a new layer. First of all, I'm pressing Command-D to deselect or Control-D. I am then pressing Command Shift N or Control Shift N, of course, on the PC. Command Shift N is the keyboard command for bringing up a new layer. The reason I really like this keyboard shortcut is because I can name my layer as I create it. That way I don't have copy of layer one or layer two or layer three or copy of copy of layer three. I can just call this one green circle. I can even provide a color for it. I'll choose green. This has nothing to do with the way the composition is going to look. It's just for organization in the layers panel only. Click OK. So you'll see that green is just indicating the placement of that particular layer so I can identify it easier. Now next I'm going to just take my elliptical marquee tool, hold down my shift key, make an ellipse or a circle, shift delete, choosing color, choosing this time green, click OK, and press OK again. One more, Command Shift N or Control Shift N, and I'm typing in yellow square, and this time I'll make this one yellow. And I'm only applying that color so that you can see these in the layers. Now I'm going to deselect, taking my rectangular marquee tool and making a yellow square. Now shift delete brings up color, choose yellow, click OK, and deselect, Command D. So I have my layered document that I'm going to start working with. First thing that I want to show you, quick easy way to automatically select layers that you want to work on. There's one of two ways. One is that if I go to my move tool, you'll see that there is an auto select button up here. I actually don't like that button and I don't turn it on. And the reason why is because it turns on auto select all the time. A much better method to use for selecting layers is to hold down your command or your control key as you select the layer. So like for instance, when I hold down my command key and click on the red square, you'll notice the red square layer became active. So I can command click and drag on the green circle or command click and drag on the yellow square and you'll see that as I'm moving items, since I have the command key down, it's automatically activating the right layer. Now, if you want to take this a little further, like for instance, you can't get to a particular layer, maybe it's hidden. So we'll take the red square layer and just move it up to the stack by clicking and dragging in the layers panel. 
I know I want to get a hold of a layer behind there somehow. I can right click and I have a right clicking mouse on my Mac so I can see the contextual menu. If you don't, you can hold down the control key and click or right click on the PC as well. This indicates all the layers that are intersecting underneath the point that I clicked. So if I click on yellow square, it activates the yellow square layer. So this is another reason why you want to name layers correctly. Now if I click up here in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that only red square appears because there's no other intersecting layers there. Okay, other ways to select layers. I have the yellow square layer selected. If I press Alt or Option and the right bracket, you'll see that I can also move up my layer selection. So if you remember back to when we were using brush tools, the bracket keys off to the right of the letter P, those also work to help you work in layers. So Alt or Option, left bracket moves me down, Option or Alt, right bracket moves my selection layer up. Now, another thing that's helpful, I know I wanna move up my green circle layer. So I am pressing Option, left bracket, to move my selection down. Now I'm holding my Command key and pressing right bracket, and you'll see that when you use your Command or Control key and then use the brackets, you can physically move your layers up and down the stack. I find this really helpful because if you are working in a composition and you've lost the order in which things appear, perhaps you want to move a microphone in front of a singer and you have 40 layers, you can just select that microphone and press Command, right bracket, right bracket, right bracket, right bracket, and watch as it moves up through the stacks instead of you sitting there trying to click and drag and find where it belongs. Now I am pressing the Option or Alt, left bracket again and then holding down my command key and pressing the right bracket to move the yellow square up as well. Now moving on, I wanna duplicate a layer and what many people do is they will perhaps use a keyboard shortcut. Like for instance, if I'm on the move tool and I hold down my option or alt key, I can drag to create a duplicate of a layer. The only problem with this is, again, you get the yellow square copy. What if I'm really trying to create a drop shadow or something like that? I'm gonna go ahead and undo by pressing Command Z. And this time, I am taking my yellow square layer and I'm holding down my Option or Alt key and drag the yellow square layer down to the little dog-eared new layer icon. And it comes up with a dialog box allowing me to name this. And so I'm gonna call this yellow square top because as a default, this new layer is going to appear on top of this other layer, the original one that created this. Now, for some reason, if you ever do need a layer to appear underneath a layer that you're working on, you can add the command key or control key in with this. And so since I'm on the Mac, I can hold down the command option and click on the create new layer come up with shadow, click OK, and that actually appeared beneath the active layer. But remember, when you create new layers as a default, they do appear on top of the active layer. The only time they will not is if you hold down the command prior to clicking on the create new layer icon or control if you're on the PC. Now I'm gonna get rid of this shadow layer by dragging it down to the trash can.